heading out to a place that's known for being loud, one of the loudest buildings in the league. I'm curious from you guys, for your perspective, is that talked about as a line right off the bat this week, knowing, you know, what, what's installed, maybe more, you know, more silent counts, kind of getting that together. I know you probably work on that every week, but the idea is a, it's a big difference when you go to, to a place like that, I would think. Yeah, typically away games, you are dependent on silent count. I don't think there's ever been an away game in my career unless you're big in the fourth quarter that you don't use some silent count for an away game. So, yeah, it's something that we're, you're used to. And luckily we got two games straight going silent count, so we're more adjusted to it now. Gotcha. Thanks, man. Paul Schwartz. Hey, Jermaine. What up? Got me. Um, um, did you spend a lot of time this weekend watching football, watching NFL games? Yeah. Um, Saturday I got to hang out with the family a lot, so I didn't really watch college football and then – Yesterday, um, it was raining too much, so we just chilled inside watching a couple games just to, you know, see what other teams are doing and just watch other people play. Is it helpful to you to watch these games and just kind of think, um, you know, every team is different and just kind of think, okay, they're doing this, you know, you know why, you know, maybe that can find something here that says maybe what, you know, can help me or help our team? No, I, I don't think you can try to make judgments of the, off of other teams like that. I think that you just got to figure out what you need to do better as a team and as a person and as a player and go from there. You can't watch other teams and try to pick up little things that they're doing that you can do also because their team is built completely different to how our team is built. You know, no team in the NFL is built like the Giants. No team is built like the Lions, the Seattle Seahawks. Like, they're all built differently to um, fulfill the needs that they want and obviously need and how they want to play and their style of playing, things like that. I have one more quick one. Um, um, I, 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 I think your answer to this is going to be yes. So if it is, I want to know why. Do you think your offense is close to scoring a lot more points? Yeah, for sure. I mean, if you watch our games, we've moved the ball in every single game. Obviously, the Vikings game, we could have moved it a little bit better, but we are still moving the ball in that um, game also. And if you watch the Vikings now, a lot of teams struggle against that defense and so, you know, I feel like we played a pretty good game against them, just weren't clean enough and didn't execute enough. But then you watch the other plus three games, we've moved the ball up and down the field on all three of those teams, and all three of those teams have really good defenses. So I think that we're really close, and I think that we'll see that this week. Thank you, Jermaine. Thank you. Mark Cannizzaro. Hey, Jermaine. Uh, it just was a question about uh, having that mini bye week, uh, the extra time. What are the advantages and disadvantages of that in terms of obviously getting your body right and getting the rest, but also staying sharp? Just as an example, I mean, the Jets were coming off their best week of the year on a Thursday night and came out on Sunday with the extra time. And in this particular example, it was were not sharp at all. I'm curious what your take is on that. I think the biggest thing is it gives you time to self-reflect and see the things that you're doing better than other teams and things that you're not doing better than other teams. And it gives you an opportunity to – really dive into the things you can do better and things you need to work on. And a lot of times getting in a little break like that can be good for teams that really need to hone in on certain things and really need to get better in certain areas of their team. So, you know, I can't speak on how that got went for the Jets, but I definitely think that will be beneficial for us and it will help us really dive into those little things and get that corrected for Seattle. Thank you. I'm Kahneman. Hey, Jermaine, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Good. Um, one of the things coming into the Dallas game was everybody was pointing to Dallas was struggling, stopping the run. What did they do differently that prevented you from running, and or what didn't you do to run? I think we just didn't execute as offensive line how we needed to, and like we did in the past two games. So it was just little things where guys took turns not doing – the right thing, like me, you know, those two, three plays I could have done a better job on. And everyone, as I'm sure there's other guys that feel the same way. You know, Dallas, they have a pretty good defense. Um, they really fuss to the ball, and they have a bunch of young guys that are pretty good. But I think it was more so what we did more than what it was that they did. And so, you know, we are improve those things this week and be ready for Seattle. Do you feel... Your, I mean, your line's gotten a lot of help from the tight ends this year. Do you feel that you're now at the point where maybe you can free them up to go out more, give Daniel some more options? Do you mean in the run game or the pass game? Pass game. 
they haven't really chipped that much this year, if I'm being honest with you. It's more so they've been in in the run game, but pass game has really just been really five and five, and the running backs picking up blitzers. Thank you. We'll take two more. Ryan Dunleavy. Jermaine, thanks for doing this. Um, obvi- the analytics sites say, grade the Giants as a very high pass-blocking offensive line and not so well in the run game. Uh, is that something that – I know Andrew Thomas always talks about, like the run game is where an offensive line can make a difference. Is is that something that is a fair assessment? Like do you guys – are you guys excelling in pass protection and need to get uh, better in run blocking? Oh, obviously, I think that, you know, pass blocking, we're doing our jobs, run blocking, we need to do a lot better, and so we're working on that this week. Why do you think pass protection here has been a issue for a long, 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 long time? Why do you think that this group has come together so quickly when it's, you know, not a group that has years of chemistry together? Why do you think pass protection has come together? I think everyone on the O-line just cares, and it's a veteran group. You know, AT's been in the league for six years now Runyon is going on five Schmidt's going on two but he's an older guy so he's more experienced than he's more intelligent than a lot of younger guys in the same class as him um Van Rowan GV has been in the league for a while he's 34 years old and he's real smart and intelligent and then obviously I have a lot of experience also so experience can play a key factor in that but also we just really care about keeping Daniel upright and we know the cleaner we keep him the more confident he's going to be in the pocket and the more he would be able to do what he know, we know he can do, and he'll be able to trust us more. We know that's a big thing for him, you know, creating that trust with him and giving him the time he needs. And then when it comes to the run game, we just need to execute better and um, hone in on the little things and be better mentally. I was just hoping you could expand on that. That was what I was going to ask is, do you feel like he's trusted? Like there obviously has to be a trust there. Do you feel like that's gained as the last couple of weeks went on? And is that why he seems to be playing a little bit better than – uh, week one when you guys were all new to each other. Yeah, I think the th- one thing people don't look at is week one, that was his first game coming off a huge injury, and I don't think people look at that where, you know, last year, obviously I can't speak on that because I wasn't here, but, you know, things may not went how he wanted to, and he obviously um, was taking more hits than he would have liked. So this year we know that we have to keep him clean and keep him upright, which is every single quarterback in the NFL. If you keep them clean, and you keep them upright, then they're going to be able to do their job and execute and play the ball that they like to play and, you know, do their job and, you know, ball out. And so we know that with DJ, if we keep him clean, then that will help grow his confidence and his trust in us that he can stand in the pocket and go through his reads and deliver the ball and, you know, keep doing his thing. And if you watch the last, what, three weeks, he's really been doing his thing. And that's because he's starting to trust us more and more. And, you know, that means a lot for us because we're going out there and doing everything we can to keep him clean. So, you know, if we're going to keep doing that, keep building his trust in us and keep building his confidence. Thank you, Jermaine. Last one, Jordan Renan. Hey, Jermaine. What you up? brought up the experience of the offensive line. I'm curious how different this situation that is when you have a line like as experienced. I know John Michael's not maybe not, you know, the most experienced in the middle, but the other four guys are veterans. How much different does that make a situation when you have so much experience on your line? Yeah, I think that offensive line is one of those positions in the NFL where it's like wine. It's better over age. Instead of drinking a wine that's just made, if you have wine that's aged a lot, then that tends to taste better, right? And that's kind of like offensive line, where being a young guy in the NFL on offensive line is kind of hard because the speed is different, the techniques are different, and then also the DNs, the D-tackles, they're a lot faster, they're a lot faster than college. They're a lot more technical, and they're a lot smarter. And so that's why you sometimes see the younger guys struggle a lot because they're not used to what they're going against. And in the NFL, the older you are on the offensive line, like I said, it can be beneficial for you because you're used to going against certain guys. You're used to the speed of the game, um, bullets flying all over the place, all the plays that you got to know, knowing what the defensive line is going to do in front of you, how their positioning is going to affect how you're going to run the ball or throw the ball and little aspects like that. So I think that the more you see certain defenses and certain players, the better it can be for you. And so that's why it's good for Schmidt because he's around running a GV and they're really experienced. And then me and AT can just help him as well. But that's why I feel like we're having some success this year on the offensive line because we've all been around a lot of different offenses and we've been in the league for a while now. And obviously it can be better in the run game, which it will be.